Hey, what's going on guys? It's Frankie. I hope all of you guys are having an awesome day. My day is going pretty well. And I just want to remind you guys that at 2,000 subscribers on my channel, I'm currently about 40 or so away, I'm going to be doing a Q&A video. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a Q&A video and a thank you video too because you guys are so fucking awesome. So be sure to just comment some questions down below, add me on Instagram, Snapchat, all that. If you guys want to ask me some questions on there, I'll be um, reading those off too. I'm going to be reading questions on all kinds of platforms, so just feel free to ask me questions wherever. Quick shout out to Sean, by the way, for the gameplay. He goes off as usual. And uh, yeah, here are a couple of my social medias for you guys to follow. And uh, let's just dive into this crazy fucking story I have for you guys today. Alright, so sometime during my junior year of high school, I became friends with this guy, let's just call him Mike. He was a really cool kid, and we had a lot of classes together. We had a lot of the fun classes together, like gym science and math. Not really math, but we kind of fucked around enough to make math fun. Uh, he decided to move, like, right before my senior year of high school to southern Wisconsin, and it was just a little bit past Richmond, which is about an hour, 30-minute drive. It wasn't all that bad, but over the summer, I want to say early June, we decided to hang out. He actually texted me first on Instagram asking about it. I told him I'll drive up there. Wisconsin has, like, a lot of channels of water and lakes and such, so we figured that we'd just go to, like, a lake or something, a river, hang out there, meet a couple of his friends, and just have a good old time. Now, may I point out to you guys, during high school, Mike was, I don't want to say a drug addict, but he's definitely experimented with a lot of shit, and that's the case with a lot of my friends. A lot of my friends do drugs, but with Mike, he did a lot more than just weed and heroin. <laughs> so I was texting with Mike as I'm driving up there, and he actually told me that after we were done hanging out and such that he asked me to drive him back to Chicago because he was going to stay down there with a friend for a couple of weeks. So I'd essentially go up there, hang out with Mike up at his place, and then bring Mike back to Chicago where he'll hang down south for a little bit with some friends. So I'm like, okay, that sounds dope, no problem. I go up there, I go to southern Wisconsin, right on the border of Illinois and Wisconsin. We actually ended up getting a couple glizzies at this burger stand. And so, um, Glissies were a 10 out of 10, very fucking delicious. They were at a place called Dogs and Suds, if you guys have ever been there. Weird little establishment, it's kind of like a more old-fashioned Sonic, I'd say. You kind of drive up to the car window, order your food, they deliver to your car, you know, stuff like that. Anyways, after me and Mike were done eating our glizzies, we decided to go to Lake Geneva, and Lake Geneva is just kind of like this very overrated Midwest lake. There's a lot of, like, mom and pop shots, pop shops. <laughs> over there so we walked in a couple stores saw that everything was overpriced and walked out went down to the beach a little bit and i forgot to mention that a couple of his friends were there too like two or three two girls one guy and uh, i met all of them they're nice people and after we got done hanging out at lake geneva for a bit i want to i want to say i got there around like four and we hung out at lake geneva until like six ish and i decided that i call it i'll bring him back to chicago right now and when Mike came to Lake Geneva, he came with this fat ass backpack, like an Under Armour backpack. You like, you know, the ones that all the basketball players get at high school, like the Nike Elite backpacks. At least my high school had that. He had one of those. He played on the basketball team, so he had his like his name and number embroidered into the backpack. It was a fat ass backpack. It was meant to carry basketballs and shit. But he brought that to the lake, and I'm like, okay, cool. I thought it was just like some towels and trunks and sunscreen because the dude was pale white. So probably around 6.30, I hop in my car, Mike gets into the passenger side, throws his lug of backpack into the back seat, and we start driving through northern Chicago, and he's telling me all the places he's dealt crocodile, cocaine, heroin, oh yeah, this alley right here, I fucked this one bitch while she was snorting a line off the garbage can, like shit like that, like Mike was a crazy motherfucker, I had no idea how I, how did I even meet this guy? So we're kind of just like driving through all the white person towns, the fucking Waukegans, the damn Winnetka's, all the rich white person mansion towns, and uh, it wasn't exactly in Chicago where I was dropping Mike off, it was like in another northern suburb of Chicago, another white person neighborhood, just privileged white people <laughs> living in their mansions and shit, so anyways, me and Mike, we're driving in this car right now, and I want to say about 15 minutes go by after passing Winnetka, and he's like, okay, stop right here. And I'm like, why? We're not even at your destination yet. And he's like, yeah, well, there's this house I need to go to first. So we stop in this town. He gives me an address, and we end up going to this house. It was just a, it was a fucking ginormous fucking house, bro. Like these northern Chicago mansions, bro. There's something else. 
So we stop in front of this giant white house with like the shingles of like a house that looks like it was made in Mexico. Like they kind of just like, if you were to remove one shingle, all of them would slide off like one of those kind of houses. So we pull up to this with the fucking horseshoe driveway and um, like a four car garage. And this little white kid comes out like fucking 5'2". He looked like a string bing, jet black hair, polo shirt. Uh, khakis, some boat shoes, he comes out, and he greets Mike, he says hi to me, really nice kid, by the way, nothing against this kid, it was just like, I don't know, the atmosphere in which we were doing this in, and Mike hands him his fucking basketball bag, and I'm kind of looking at Mike, like, why did you just give him this entire, that's your bag, and the kid walks back inside, and comes back out, and hands Mike back his bag, and uh, gives him some money. He gives him he gives him a lot of fucking money. Like he had a full on rack on his ass. Like, bro, what the fuck? I've never seen so much money in one sitting. Uh, back when I worked at the amusement park, this one lady paid in a rack uh, for her kid's birthday party. That that shit blew my mind. So this is the second time I've seen like a full rack, like a thousand dollars just in my face, rubber band at all. And I'm like, wow, that's fucking insane. Of course, Mike counts up the money in front of him, makes the kid stay to make sure he's not shorting him, and he sends the kid back inside, Mike takes his backpack, and uh, he says, okay, drive. And I'm like, can you tell me what's happening right now? So basically, through another 15 minutes before I dropped Mike off, he told me about his whole coke dealing business, and all the cocaine and drugs and money he was making from this business, and yeah, that was just another one of his deals. And, um, I don't know how much cocaine was in the bag. Yeah, he, uh, he basically just wanted me to smuggle cocaine from southern Wisconsin back into Illinois to this little white kid. So, um, I don't even want to know how many years of prison time that would have given me. But, all in all, it all worked out. I dropped Mike off at his friend's house somewhere in northern Chicago. I don't even remember. Little white kid got his cocaine, and I'm sitting there in the car... Just like thinking if I went over the speed limit for five seconds and a cop saw me and pulled me over and asked to see what was inside the bag. It would just been, I, like I said, I don't know how much was in there. I, I, I'm not good with scales and estimates, but this was a fat ass backpack and he gave him a thousand dollars for some coke. And I know coke isn't cheap because, um, like I said, at the other, when I did my cocaine at a party story, that little bit of cocaine was fifty dollars. So, you know, shit's not cheap around here. And especially northern Chicago, Mike probably upped up the price because of where they live. Horseshoe driveway, giant fucking mansion, like some Home Alone type house. Uh, fascinating enough, the Home Alone house is actually in Winnetka, like the actual house. So uh, yeah, guys, that's a story of how I smuggled, well not really me, but how I helped someone smuggle cocaine from southern Wisconsin back into Illinois. And uh, even, it was under my nose. <laughs> Unironically, it was under my nose. I didn't even know what was happening because he didn't tell me until we started driving to his house. Anyway, guys, that's the story. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you guys are staying safe, sanitizing your damn hands. And uh, yeah, guys, peace out.